On a previous lesson, we learned how the basics of Eloquent work internally. That is, how can we set properties, or rather, how does it set properties, how does it get properties, and how does it persist models. On this lesson, we're going to learn two more things. How does it handle building queries? That is, when you build a query with Eloquent, what is actually happening behind the scenes? And also, how relationships work with Eloquent. And those two are intertwined because relationships happen to use the query builder as well. So let's jump into the code and check that out. All right, so I have the same test file that I had in the previous video, and we're just going to use those tests to run some code frequently. Let's talk about the query builder. Say we create a user. Okay, we have a user created. If we want to find the user, we can do something like user, and then we can call find, and then pass the user ID, in this case, one. So let's jump and die this. Let's see what we get. Okay, cool, we get the user. Now, the first thing here is, that this find method does not actually exist. And we can even see our IDE complaining. This method does not exist on the model class. This method does exist, however, in the query builder class. So the first thing about query builder is when you call those methods, you're not calling a method that exists within the model class. You're calling a method that exists within the query builder class, more specifically within eloquent builder. We're going to come back to this soon, but the basics is if you have a model class, and you call a method that's not a relation, that's not a method within the model, and that's not a method of a superclass, that is the model parent class, Eloquent is going to forward the call to the query method. And just so you can see, we have find here. If I simply add query before find, now our IDE understands this code. And that's because when we call query, we are explicitly getting back a query builder, as you can see, we have an eloquent builder, and then we're calling find within this eloquent builder instance. So let's go back to this. Whenever we call, let's say find, what eloquent does is it passes that to the query builder. So it calls query for you, and then calls a method within the query builder. Let's take a look. So let's execute this code. Okay, we got a user. So we know that find actually means query find. So let's remove this query and see what's happening. The first thing we're going to do is go to the model class and we're going to look for the call magic method. And this is where the magic happens. So if I were to dump and die method and parameters here, whoops, like this, and we rerun the task. Okay, we're calling find and we're passing a parameter with one. So we have some checks first and we're going to skip those. We don't have relation resolvers. What we want to see is this call right here. Forward call to is part of a Laravel trait called forwards calls. And all it does is forward a call to a given object. In this case, we pass the object, we pass the method we want to call and the parameters and then catch the error and give you a better error instead. So what we're saying here essentially is if we get a call for a method that does not exist within the model class and it does not match any of these conditions, we want to forward that call to a query builder instance and we call new query to instantiate it. This new query method does two things. First, it creates a new query without scope. So this returns an eloquent builder instance and register global scope simply registers the global scopes you have within your model. So let's take a look. New query without scopes calls new model query, and we pass the with and with count. And those are things that you define within the model. So if you define with, you're saying which relations do you want to bring within the base model and with count the same thing. So Eloquent needs to be aware of those and return them for you. Let's go back. And then we have register global scopes. As you can see, all it does is get the global scopes for the given model and return it within the builder and then return to the builder. Now, it's important to notice that what we are returning here is an eloquent builder instance, not a query builder instance. And as you can see, if we go into this class, it does not use inheritance. It does not actually extend query builder. It uses composition. So if we go into the constructor, you can see that the base query builder is injected into this class. To circle back on this, when you call new model query, we are instantiating a base query builder because it's passed as an argument to the eloquent builder. It's here in the constructor. And we're also instantiated an eloquent builder. And after instantiating this eloquent builder, we call set model. This is important because this is the eloquent builder and you need to be aware of which model 
what you're talking about. So as you can see that as soon as we pass that into this method, it already adds a constraint to the computer. We specify which table we're talking about. And Eloquent's going to use this model reference later to build queries. So that's the major difference between the Eloquent computer and the query computer. The Eloquent computer, as I said in a previous video, is a specialized version of the query computer that is aware of a given model. Okay, so this is pretty straightforward, right? Whenever we call one of those methods, we're actually calling query and then this method. This just provides some synthetic sugar for us and some better DX. Okay, now let's talk about relationships. And I have an example here. So we're creating a user, then we are instantiating a post and then saving this post to the user. Well, using the user as a reference. Let's check this image. So relations have two things. Um, the first one is the actual relation method. So in this case, it's post. This is an actual method within the user class. This is the method that defines the relationship. So this method exists. This is not going to be called by the call magic method. And then you also have the option to call those methods as if they were properties. So let's take a look into that. We're saving a post. And then if I call, and I'm just refreshing the user here to make sure that we have a fresh instance. If I were to call user posts, and you can see this is not the method, this is a property that does not exist, obviously we get a collection with all of the posts. So what happens is behind the scenes, whenever you call the relation as if it were a property, Eloquent is going to check an internal property within its class, within the model itself, that is an associative array with all of the loaded relations. We cache them in memory. If it does not find the relation you're looking for on this associative array, it is going to fetch it for you by calling the actual method for you behind the scenes and then it is going to store it in memory. So if you call a relation twice in a row, you're not going to execute two queries. You're only going to execute one. If you call the relation method many times and you're going to get a query builder, sort of, we're going to see that later. And you use the method version, you're going to execute as many calls as method calls. So let's see how this works. As you know, you can fetch relationships like this or you can do something like this, and they're going to yield the same result, at least in this scenario. What's happening here is post returns an instance of has many, and has many is a relation class. Has many specifically and has one extend has one or many, and belong to, belongs to many, uh, has many through extend relation. But they, they all extend relation. And the thing with those classes is they are relation classes and they are also sort of like query builders. Let's check the has one or many abstract class. As you can see, the first thing we notice is we inject an instance of an eloquent builder. We inject a model, we inject a foreign key and a local key. So this relation class must be aware of all of this, the query builder, so it can actually build queries, the parent model, so it knows what, who owns this relation, and the foreign key and the local key. Let's see how this works. First, how does Eloquent handle property calls for you? How does this work? Let's go into the model again, and we've seen this in the past class. And so let's look for the get magic method. Okay, we know it goes into get attribute. And as you can see on this line right here, it verifies whether we're talking about a relation or if the relation is loaded in the cache. And as you can see, this method just checks if we have a key on the relations property. And this relations property is the associative array I mentioned. That's where we cache the relations. So if it is a relation, we want to get the relation value. If it isn't a relation, since this is the end of the method, we want to throw an exception saying the property you looked for does not exist either within the attributes or as cacheable attributes or as relations. Let's look at get relation value. As you can see, if it's loaded, we have it cached, we can just return it. If it isn't relation, then we want to return no. And we already checked this on the get attribute method. So this is just an extra safety check. If we have prevent lazy loading enabled, we want to throw an exception. We don't want anyone to lazy load things. We want to load them within the query. So it will already be cached. And then finally, we have get relationship from method. So let's take a look into this. We pass a method. 
So the first thing we do is we instantiate that method. And in our case, this would give us an instance of has many. Let's take a look. There we go. So we have a relation of has many that has an eloquent pewter that has a query pewter. So with this relation, we check if it's a relation and then we call relation get results and then we set the relation. So if you don't know what tap does, um, tap gives you, allows you to pass a value and then you have access to a callback with that value. So what this is essentially doing is something like results equals relation get results, this set relation, and then we set the relation and then we just return the results. So this is the same thing. This is just a, I'd say, more concise way of writing this. Everyone has their preferences. But the point is, we're getting the results and then we're calling set relation. And all that set relation does is set up a key on that attributes, I'm sorry, on that relations array I mentioned earlier. So we just set a value. What we're interested in is get results. Let's take a look at this method. As you can see, it is an abstract method within the relation class. And that's because each type of relation will get its results differently. Let's take a look at has many since that's what we're working with. As you can see, all it does is call get within its query builder instance. Pretty straightforward, right? Let's see how this works. Let's go all the way back into our user method. I'm sorry our user class at the post method. As you can see, it returns an instance of has many, but this has many method does a little bit more. Let's take a look at it. So we first instantiate an instance. That's That sounds weird, right? Instantiate an instance. But yes, we got an instance of the related class. So in this case, this will be an instance of post. Let's take a look. There we go, we have an instance of post. Then we get the foreign key and the key name. The foreign key is user ID and the local key is ID. So let's see what we have here. Just to confirm I'm not insane. Yeah, we have user ID and ID. Now the trick is this will call a new method, a new has menu, which simply returns an instance of has many. And as you can see, there's a little trick here. For the foreign key, we don't want just the foreign key. We don't want just user ID. We also need to include a table so that's going to be included in the sequence statement. What we're passing here is essentially something like posts.userID. So that we know that we're talking about the user ID column within the post table. And we're also passing a query builder of the related instance that is a post in this example, so that we can hydrate those models at some point. Let's take a look at this method. So let's dump what we have for the query and the foreign key. Okay, so for the query, we have the usual, an eloquent pewter and a base pewter. And let's go down a little bit. As you can see, the model is post. So this is the related model and instance of it. And then the other thing that we dumped, which is the foreign key, as you can see, it's not just user ID, it's posts.userID. When you pass all of that information to your has many class, and let's go to has one or many, when you construct it, you can see that we specify the local key, we specify the foreign key, and then we also construct the parent constructor, which exists within the relation class. So we have a query instance, we have a parent instance, we have a related instance, and then we add constraints. That's what add the constraints into the query builder that says, hey, you should look for this table and with these constraints. Let's take a look. We want has many, so we actually want has one or many since they kind of work the same. And this is where the magic happens. We're adding a where statement where we're saying that we want to look for posts where the user ID equals the parent key. Let's, let's take a look at the values that we have here. Let's see what foreign key is and what parent key is. Let's run this. And as you can see, posts that user ID and one, and that's because we want to fetch a post that has a user ID of one. So when we instantiate this has many class, we already have those applied to the computer and we also have a not no statement. So to recapitulate, uh, whenever we call the posts method, we're getting back an instance of has many. That has many instance and we can actually see this. So let's jump and dive this. Let's say posts, oh, whoops, user posts. We get back a has many instance, right? 
which has an eloquent pewter, not a query pewter, but an eloquent pewter. This eloquent pewter, as we can see, is aware of the post model and of the parent model, which is user. So it knows both tables it needs to reach out to. And whenever we instantiate this, um, this query pewter, this eloquent pewter, it also already has its constraints applied. As you can see, we have uh, one binding, one word binding. So when the query is constructed, we already have those applied by default. We can add things on top of it. So here we have, as you can see, two words. We have a basic word. So user ID equals one and user ID is not no. So I would say that a good way to think about this is it does some things and we're going to see some, for example, you can do something like save, which is going to save a given instance and apply this constraint. And you have some operations depending on the relation type. You can do something like attach or maybe sync, but this is essentially a specialized query builder as well. When we run save, this is basically an abstraction where we can pass an instance of an eloquent model and eloquent will convert that into a SQL query and run it for us. But think of this as a, a specialized query builder. Just like we have the eloquent builder, this is a specialized version of an eloquent builder. And that's also why we can do things like add additional words. So let's do something like title, and we want to say that it's supposed to be post, and we want to get all of the instances, all of the records, sorry. If we run this, we won't get anything. But if we run post title, we will get the object we're looking for. Or not, apparently we won't. That's funny. Oh yeah, I'm not saving this. Okay, so let's redo this. Let's save the object. Okay, we're getting back something. If I type something different, we don't get back anything. So we have access to all of the methods that the query builder provides. And as you can see, this is within eloquent pewter. So whenever we call post, we get an instance of has many. We got that right. Has many is an instance of has one or many, and it has a query pewter, which lives within the relation class. That's where we have the property. And whenever we call within the magic call method within the relation class, we forward that call into the eloquent pewter. So if I were to dump and die this, you can see that we'll get back where. There we go, where, and if we want to see the parameters, title, post title. So it is essentially forwarding the call to the eloquent computer instance that we have within this object. So yeah, whenever you call post as a property, what Eloquent's doing behind the scene is actually doing this. And when you call this, the post method and get at the end, for example, what's happening behind the scenes is this relation, which in this case is a has many instance, is building a query behind the scenes and calling the query builder for you and then giving you the results back. So it's an abstraction on top of an abstraction on top of an abstraction. And that's how you get such, such a cool developer experience. There's a lot of abstractions involved. All right, so as you've seen, the Alec computer is pretty straightforward. Relations are a little bit more complex, but I, I hope that it made sense to have a relation abstraction, which happens to use an eloquent builder abstraction, which happens to use a query builder abstraction. And each one of those is a more specialized version of the other. You have the regular query builder class, which you can run queries with, and that gives you a basic data structure, such as an array. Then you have an eloquent builder, which will run queries, will add some constraints for you automatically, such as the table related to the model, and will give you back a hydrated model. And then you have the relations, which is an abstraction on top of the eloquent computer, which will be aware of two models, two related models, in this case, user and post, will add the relevant constraints to the query computer. We relate those two tables. It's gonna do that magic. And then if you want, you can, you know, call query computer methods on top of that or call the relation specific methods, but they, they all happen within that abstraction layer. Um, I hope this video made sense. If you liked this, leave a like and a comment. Let me know uh, what else you want to see on this channel. And I'll see you guys on the next video. Bye-bye.